Hey, welcome. Um, so, this week, unfortunately, I uh, couldn't get out to anywhere to take photos. So, uh, instead, I figured uh, this would be a good time to go over my 10 favorite images from the summer. Um, all of these are images that are associated with various videos that I put out this summer. Um, so, I'll put links to all of them in the, the description of the videos they come from. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. So this first image is one of the ones I got during the drone camp. Um, it's very, um, for like a better way to put kind of a, a hero shot of one of the drones. Um, particularly, you know, it's relatively present as it's the darkest thing in the frame. Um, you know, I mean, there are potentially some improvements, um, it is kind of a very empty frame now. Obviously, there are clouds, but other than that, um, you know, there's not much visual interest, which works really well for you know, like Instagram because it kind of catches your attention. Um, but I don't necessarily like this as a as something that's going to be like blown up or printed out, All right? Um, so the second image is also from the the drone camp. Now, um, this is the main building at the college. Um, this is kind of the shot that the college really likes um, because it's got the drone in it but it also has the the main building of the campus and it's just kind of a it's just a nice overall uh, composition that you know puts emphasis on um, something that is particular to the college. Um, you know I just think it's a it's a it's a nice composition and it is it is a very um, advertisement level kind of kind of image but it it, it works for me uh, the third image is finally not a drone image um, so this is uh, actually when I was testing out my bags um, back in that forested area there are a lot of uh, various different uh, fungal growths on the various trees and stuff um, you know and this one uh, particularly what what stood out to me was not just the the kind of the the highlights and the low lights the the just the texture of the light but also um, you know the that uh, kind of rust brown color um, to these mushrooms which I think makes a, a, a pretty decent uh, composition. I wouldn't say that the the elements are necessarily like astounding. Um, what really kind of brings this out is is just the the color and kind of the 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 depth of field. Um, you know, this is all in focus, and then you've kind of got you know more blur and bokeh as you go out. Um, overall, not a not a bad photo. Um, none of these are. I don't consider any of these bad. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, um, I probably won't be putting this in my portfolio, right? So moving on, this is from the Swope Loop. Um, I like this image. Um, so as you can see, I did a square crop on it. Um, you know, I would probably, if I were to do this again, get closer to those trees. I think they make a nice frame especially with this um, taller pine kind of centered in there. I might try and move this so that it is centered um, to the lake if I were to take this shot again, but I still think it makes a, a pretty good overall composition. Um, you know, improvements here, I would say, you know, a more visually interesting sky because it's just solid overcast here. Um, also, probably, you know, in the falls, get some get some browns mixed in here, you know. Um, hopefully a, a few golds and reds, and uh, I think it would actually look much, much better. Um, as it stands right now, there's not much in terms of, of color, and, you know, it's just greens and, and some, some very dull blues. Um, but otherwise, I do kind of, I do like the composition. So the next one, this one's from Purgatory Falls. Um, you know, uh, the the main point of interest here, um, besides the the obvious of the the cascades, these the this waterfall here, um, you know, is just the the kind of dappled light that's coming in and giving you know brief highlights 
uh, to an otherwise darker scene. Um, you know, I, again, in an ideal world, um, you know, I'd, I'd be able to wait around for hours to get just the right angle of light, um, you know, coming through the trees. But overall, I think it's a, it's an effective, uh, composition. The, the one, you know, issue I have is there's this, you know, just main leading diagonal that doesn't particularly go anywhere. And it kind of makes your eyes kind of just leave the frame rather than, um, be for lack of a better term trapped, um, and kind of looking more holistically on the frame. Next is a uh, photo from the summit of Tecumseh. Um, for those of you who actually go and watch that video, this is actually a re-edit of that photo. Um, this is one of the NH48 at 50 millimeters. Um, one of the two that I took this summer. Uh, the original edit um, is a lot darker and a lot more blue. Um, I decided to go away from that. It was one of those things where, uh, you know, at the time I thought that's how I wanted it to be edited. And then later on I decided, you know, it looks better if I do it this way. Um, you know, things I like about this, uh, obviously you get, you know, all of these layers of the various ranges and ridges, uh, of the white mountains. Um, but you also have, you know, kind of parallel layers of the clouds. Um, so you've got you've got a lot of depth, but you also have you know foreground um, interest, which gives an even grander scale um, to that depth. Uh, so I think overall it's a it's a pretty effective um, little composition um, from the the top of Tecumseh. This next image um, this is uh, from Doublehead Mountain. Uh, overlooking uh, Swam Lake. So if I'm remembering my geography correctly, Swam Lake is here, and then Winnipesaukee, which is right near there, is, is around this area. Um, you know, the nice thing here, um, similar to to the Tecumseh shot, you know, you've got this, this depth, and you don't have as many layers to that depth, um, but you do, you know, you do get a grandness of scale right especially with the uh, the lakes and kind of you can see that it this isn't a contiguous body of water right so so it gives a, a bigness to it for lack of a better way to put it um one of the things that i think would be better um which probably is not super doable with this location um, is a little bit more foreground interest just to enhance that depth you can see a little bit here that i haven't gotten rid of um and i think that that doesn't detract, but it just kind of blends in with the the rest of the image. Um, and so, you know, there's that that would be one more layer of depth. Another difference, um, particularly for this one, this is a uh, HDR merge. Um, so, and you can tell it's got a lot more local contrast. It's a little bit flatter of an image, um, and that's partially due to due to my HDR processing, but it also is partially due to just the the light at the time um, you know this was taken around midday you're not talking about really you know interesting light all of these shadows here are caused by these uh, clouds so you know could be better probably um, you know uh, uh, with with a, a better angle on the light you know and, and not an HDR um, it would probably look a lot better um, but this is what I ended up with. All right, so here is, um, this is Mount Wadatek actually on the trail coming up. Um, I was not intending to get this photo, but it was one of those things where I was walking and I noticed that this, um, kind of very interesting dead tree was perfectly framed. Like this is the trail that you're walking up. So this is literally where you would be. Um, and you just kind of look and there it is. Right. And I thought that was pretty interesting. So I, you know, took off my bag and, and took the photo. Um, now, obviously I have post-processed this and other than the normal kind of raw develop stuff that I would do, um, it also has a pretty, I, it's not really heavy, but it does have a vignette so that this is much brighter. Now, um, 
that is to give the same effect that I was seeing because you can kind of notice um, if you look that because this tree is not fully, you know, because it's dead, right, and it doesn't have branches extending up, it is part of the canopy that's missing. So when you're actually looking at it, you actually do see this as basically just this illuminated odd shaped tree, um, which, you know, uh, in, in doing the processing, um, you know, I wanted to attempt to replicate and that's why, um, we have a vignette here, which I normally don't, don't apply to my photos, but I think it works very well to, to draw your attention, um, to kind of the, the abnormal thing in the scene, uh, more than if, uh, you know, we didn't have that, that same level of, of um, contrast. Moving on, uh, this one is from Mount Hale, about a mile and a half up the trail. Um, we have these, these nice cascades here. Now, at the time, because um, it was a mile and a half up a, a mountain, um, <laughs> I was uh, very tired and just kind of wanted to take, I, I knew I wanted a shot, but I didn't uh, necessarily take as much time as I, I would have liked. Um, you know, ideally, um, you know, this is the kind of shot that you, you pull out a tripod. I didn't have a tripod with me that day. Um, and you, you focus stack. So um, instead, I am shot it like F8. And you can see that it's just, um, it's not super sharp in any particular place. Just kind of a regret, but I think the overall. Uh, yeah, let's snap that back. I think the overall image is fine. Um, you know, uh, the lighting could be a little bit better, but that's just a that's just a matter of hitting it at the right time. You know, with the right cloud cover. Um, but overall, I think it's a it's a very good, it's a very evocative um, photo. And then finally, we have. Uh, my NH48 uh, at 50 millimeters um, from the top of Mount Hale. Now, one of the things that I realize about this photo is that it does not look good at this size. So, at this size, you just kind of see a pile of rocks and it's pretty visually busy. What I want to do is let me go into a one to one. And actually, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. But I think uh, this is the kind of, of photo that I would want to print pretty large, right? Because then you start to see the fine details. You start to see the 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 the, the actual summit cairn and kind of the the character and texture of it more than you do when it is you know zoomed out to this level, which is where you would see it, you know, on a computer screen. So I think it it would work well as a as a large print, more so than it does. Uh, in in this configuration, and of course this is black and white because you've got you know you you've got browns and and grays of the stone, and then this is all just green. The sky was really flat that day, you know, um, so you don't really have that much color interest to begin with, um, and I felt that it was more effective as a black and white photo. Also because I could I could take the greens down a little bit and make it a little bit more. Um, contrasty which I think serves the the photo very well but I definitely I, I do like this photo but I think it it definitely needs to be you know viewed at a at a larger scale um, that just isn't possible to do while having it entirely displayed on a screen All right, that's gonna do it um, for today's video. Um, <laughs> not super long, um, pretty pretty straightforward. Uh, let me know what you think. Um, which of these do you like, or which do you not like? I'm willing to take both criticisms. Um, yeah, uh, so that that was those are the ten from this summer. Um, some of them are you know, pretty good. Um, they're not necessarily my best work, but they're the best I was able to get. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy with all of them. Um, and, you know, as time goes on and I, I acclimatize to photographing, you know, the White Mountains, I'll probably get better and better photos. But, 
for now this is what I could get and uh, hopefully I can uh, get out and go hiking before uh, next week so uh, I might not have a video next week so I guess I will see you when I see you